Welcome to FNB Field. Paul Miller and Steve Hassinger here with you. Steve's going to join us for the first few innings of the day. We're going to talk about something that's uh, near and dear to Steve's heart, of course, mine too, and that is the virtual job fair that's going on. We'll have a chance to talk about that here in just a few minutes. But to the game at hand, the Knights victorious 7 4 in that first game. They run their winning streak to six games. Central Penn gaining momentum and definitely heading in the right direction here, Paul. Six in a row. Interesting. Let's see what Zerby has today. Kozer looked pretty good in the first start. Zerby leads the team in innings with 11.2. Does have 11 runs and eight earned. So looking to bounce back here. Does have 15 strikeouts, Steve, across 11 and two-thirds. Only seven walks. Yeah, and 12 hits allowed, so... Uh, the strikeouts have definitely been affected with 15 strikeouts and 11 and two-thirds. And that one's going to be out of play. About three rows up down the first baseline here at FNB Field, home of the Harrisburg Senators, Steve. And they will be opening up on Friday, April 5th, and I just so happen to have tickets for opening day. And if the weather's like this, it'll be a great day to be out at the ballpark. Of course, you can always go to senatorsbaseball.com to check out their home schedule and make plans to come out to a couple games this year. The Nightly News, we're actually going to be doing a fundraiser out here in May. So nice. once we get some more details about that, I'll share that with you. And hopefully you can come out and join us, Steve. Sounds good. Great park, and, and really the field just looks terrific. Oh, my gosh. Great to see the sun today. 54 degrees. It's supposed to be. Oh, he rings him up on the outside corner. Hill goes down looking, and Zerby starts the game off with a strikeout. Nice pitch by Zerby there, as you said. Now he's catching the outside corner. Two, Alex Pretty much the same lineup here. We do have Brady Park catching, Kevon Davis at DH, and Morell in left in comparison to the first game. And Fantaski gets a hold of it, but way foul. There's a parking lot over there. Hopefully my car is safe. <laughs> I didn't hear any crash, so that's a good sign. You always love when you come to a Senators game and somebody hits a foul ball and you hear they, they play the sound effect of the glass breaking. And Fantaski, another pop foul. Quickly two strikes. Nightly News player of the game in the first game was Jeff Randy Montero, who had a couple of hits, a couple of steals, and scored a run. Uh, but it was definitely a team effort. Kozer pitched very well. Hafner came in for the save. And the Knights have won six in a row. And he rings him up again. Two strikeouts to start this game for Colton Zerby. And Fantaski took a look at the ump there as he was leaving, thought that pitch was a little high, but... Derby got the call. Now batting number 10, Evan Berkovich. Berkovich came into the day hitting 294 with two doubles, three RBIs. Derby looks locked in at this point. The 0 1 pitch from Zerby. And pulls it foul. Quickly had a hitter 0 and 2 with two quick outs on strikeouts. To start the game. And out of play. Quickly two strikes again. Erglovich had a single and an RBI in the first game. One for three with a strikeout. It was a back and forth contest in the first three innings, uh, but the Knights pulled away with a big bottom of the third, plating four runs and didn't look back. Hafner came in and shut him down over the last two and a third. The 
What a pitch, and he strikes out the side looking, Steve. Pulled what the, a performance. He pulled the string on that one. Fantastic display there as Zerby goes three up, three down with three strikeouts. And that'll take us to the bottom of the first. The Knights will come up to bat with the score tied 0-0. Well, Steve, now's as good a time as any to talk about the virtual job fair. Let's just read a little bit about it, and then we can kind of talk about it during the next half inning. Central Penn students are invited to join a virtual career fair through JA Inspire of Junior Achievement to explore careers and organizations. JA Inspire will be available to students from March 1st until June 30th. That's right, a career fair available for over three months. Starting March 1st, you can register an account at jascpa.vfairs.com. Last year, the exhibit hall featured booths from over 60 employers. Each booth has a description of the company, videos, as well as job and internship openings. Other tools included in the career fair are webinars within the auditorium and career readiness activities within the career lab. Of course, if you have any questions about the career fair, contact career services at centralpen.edu. So tell me a little bit more uh, than, than we just heard about uh, from uh, the JA Inspire virtual career fair, Steve, that you'd like to share with the audience. So the nice thing about a virtual job fair is you can access it 24 seven, any day of the week. So it's nice for people that maybe can't go to a job fair during the day. Lots of job fairs we see are held, you know, during prime hours during the day when employers are available. Employers are available here 24 seven virtually. So you can go into the exhibit hall, you can visit an employer booth, you can learn more about that company. A lot of the companies have videos posted about different topics. Um, and you can see what positions are currently available that, are, that you can apply to. You know, Steve, this was one of the things that we had talked about on a previous podcast, but not that, you know, in-person job fairs are going to go away, but do you think this is sort of the wave of the future, maybe to do in conjunction with an in-person job fair? I think we were starting to see this a little bit prior to COVID, and then COVID obviously accelerated. Now batting number 11, job fairs. Owen Zell. Well, we will continue chatting about that as we go, Steve. But back to the action. Zell singled and uh, stole two bags in the first game. Did go one for three with a run. Excuse me, one for four. So, at least uh, during the home contest, Zell has struggled to get on base. But he made some fantastic defensive plays in that first contest, Steve, to seal the victory in the late innings. And coming in, only two extra base hits among his 12 hits, a double and a triple. But anytime Owen gets on base, it can turn quickly into a double or a triple. This is, speed. this is exactly what happened in the first game. He reached base and uh, proceeded to steal two bases in a row and then to score the, the first run for the Knights. So we need to get him on base. It's gonna be outside, runs the count to three and one. Galarza on the mound for Bucks County. And Owen was taken all the way there and runs the count full. Game two here. If you're close, stop on by. We're just getting started. And Zell got rung up. He was halfway down to first base. Thought he got the walk. So four outs in this game, Steve, four strikeouts. Yeah, nobody put a ball in play. Yet. Now batting number 33, Adam Hoover. And Hoover comes and steps up. He reached base three times, two singles, a walk, and a run scored. So Hoover continues his on-base prowess that he's been known for as a knight. That one comes right back at us. And this is Galarza's second start on the year in his third appearance, seven and a third innings pitch coming into this one, 11 runs given up, six earned. So he has a 7.36 ERA, eight nice, strikeouts. Nice slider there off the plate, but uh, an impressive pitch. Wind is all but died down. There's a small breeze here, but uh, this sun 
is going to be out. There's not one single cloud in the sky. And uh, like I have mentioned many times, it's just a beautiful day for a game. There's that slider again. Left it out over the plate, but Hoover couldn't make good contact. And that one's also out of play. Runs the count to two and two. And high runs it full. Of course, Steve is just as excited as I am for opening day on Thursday. All teams in action. Five outs, five Ks for both teams. Now batting number 13, Nick Joseph. And Joseph did reach base. He was hit by a pitch and scored in the third of the first game. Did it hit into a double play. Uh, I mean, you want to talk about he, it, probably an exit velocity of well over 100. Hit right at somebody <laughs> in for a double play. Those are the ones you hate. Not that anyone likes a double play, but that one especially when you hit it square and it's right at somebody only to, to line into that double play. But nonetheless, Joseph also had some fantastic plays in center field as well. Just off the plate. Let's see if we can get a ball in play fair here and a string of five strikeouts. Or maybe a walk. We take that for the first base runner. Indeed. Especially with Mr. Zach Boyer on deck. Three balls, one strike. And Joseph fouls it off down the third baseline. 3 2. Two outs, 0 0 here in the first. Into the dugout, but it looked like they uh, scattered. Nobody hit in there. And he chases. Three up, three down, all by strikeout here early on. So we will go to the top of the second inning. Knights and Bucks County Community College are tied at zero. Calling all gamers, Central Penn College was recently accepted into the National Association of Collegiate Esports. We are now a part of the association that boasts more than 130 schools and over 3,000 student athletes. If you have any interest in the Central Penn Gaming Club or the esports program, please reach out to club advisors Michael Pico or Donnie Lewis. And we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back with the top of the second inning. From FMB Field, this is Paul Miller and Steve Hassel. Back here with you. Top of the second. Can Zerby continue his strikeout streak? Big cut there from Visconto. Visconto was hit by a pitch and walked 0 for 2 in game number one. One for 12 coming into the contest today. The 
One, one. He gets the call at the knees. And one ball, two strikes for Zerby. Zerby deals. And he struck him out. There's four in a row for Zerby. Catcher set up outside on the outside part of the plate, and Zerby hit right into the glove. Nice pitch. Now batting number 13, Joey Ruggiero. Ruggiero walked and singled in a one for two outing back in game one. Being cut there, comes up empty. I don't know if I've ever seen seven strikeouts to start a game, Paul. I, I don't ever recall that happening that I'm aware of. And that was out of play. So we will not get our first ball in play to this point. Zerby dealing though. Both pitchers making some good pitches, too. Nothing really right down the middle of the plate. Hitting the corners, keeping the pitches low. Park is uh, doing a quick equipment adjustment. <coughs> and the pitch. The low. Runs the count to one and two. Do I hear five? Just got a piece of that one. He did, just barely got a piece to foul it off and stay alive here at one and two with one out in the second. One ball, two strikes, top of the second, one down. Zerby with four strikeouts to start this game. Just a little low, trying to get him to chase. Next time we will be here will be one week from today on April 1st, the day after Easter, where the Knights will take on ESAC rival Manor College. And Zerby inside will run the count full. And Steve will be here with me next Monday, so looking forward to that, as usual. And hopefully we get a beautiful spring day like today. Amen. Really anything above 50, I'm good with. And there's a shot right to Boyer, but that's going to be too cons... Finally got a ball in play and hit well, but as you said, right at Boyer, didn't even have to move. Two consecutive outs here to start, five in a row for Zerby, but that one was tattooed now, just right at Boyer. You know, that's why they do call it the hot corner. Yes. Galarza, the pitcher, also the five, the six hole hitter here today for Bucks County in this ESAC rivalry. Of course, uh, we talked previous uh, last week about the Talking Knights podcast that you could find at our YouTube channel. And this one is deep to left. Morell's giving chase. And that's going to hit up against the wall. And Galarza gets into second with a double. Well, we were talking about the Talking Knights podcast, which is Nightly News Vice President as of today, Dalton Kohler. Nice. Uh, had Colton Zerby on one of the shows. Also had uh, night last year from uh, the Knights, Blake Myers was on the first episode talking about reliving the ESAC championship game. The victory last year, one of the arguably largest victories in Central Penn baseball history. Exciting times for the baseball team last year. Um, 
And, you know, with six in a row here, looking like we might have a return to the ESAC championship. Well, I think, uh, and, and this is something Dalton said on the show, uh, small college World Series or bust is where they're at. You know, you want to always have improvement. And, of course, the ESAC would be very important as the ground yep. ball goes to Lowen but can't come up with it. That was a tough play. Yeah, that ball had a lot of spin on it. It just queued off the bat. And uh, once it got past Derby there, it was going to be a tough play. I don't know that he had much of a play at first anyway with the speed or lack thereof of that ball. Yeah. At least he kept it, kept it in front of him and runs it first and third. Still two out, though. Can Zerby get out of this with two outs? Low, and it gets away yeah. from Park. He can't find it. And a run comes in on the pass ball. And Parks just never could find that ball to get on it. And even if he did, uh, the run was going to score. So Bucks County gets on the board first in two consecutive games. And we'll see if the Knights can answer, but they got to get out of this jam here. Can Zerby get out of it? Does have two outs. It's the call on the strike. Good pitch there. Just after four o'clock, it announces 57 degrees. And just makes contact. Let's go, Dom! Head of a one and two. Now you just want to put that, uh, that pass ball out of your, your head and Concentrate on just finishing off this batter here and get out of the inning with a one one run. Salina was 0 for 2 with a hit by pitch in game one. What a pitch there and another strikeout. That'll be five on the day so far for Zerby. And while that run did come around, the Knights will have a chance to settle the score as we go to the bottom of the second. It is 1-0 Bucks County. We're going to take a, a short pause here. I wanted to talk a little bit more about, uh, and we'll come back to, to the virtual job fair here in the next half inning, Steve. But don't forget the CPC Film Series returns for the spring term as Film Series correspondent Nick Hogan presents the classic Labyrinth on Friday, May 3rd. It will be held in the Capitol Blue Cross Theater with doors opening at 6 p.m. Of course, all of our CPC Film Series events are free and open to the public, so please save the date for May 3rd, as Nick Hogan will present on Jim Henson's Labyrinth, the classic 1986 film produced by George Lucas and starring David Bowie and Jennifer Connelly about a 16-year-old who must solve a labyrinth to rescue her baby brother when he is taken by the Goblin King. Save the date for May 3rd. We're going to take a short pause, and we'll be right back. Paul Miller and Steve Hassinger here at FNB Field. It's 1-0. Night's Trail. Number 14, Zach Boyer. All right, well, not only did Zerby strike out the side in his first inning, Galarza did as well. Zell, Hoover, Joseph all down on strikes. Let's see what Boyer can do here. And he cracks one deep. This is not going to get out of the fence, but did uh, give that one a ride, unfortunately, right into the glove of the Bucks County Community College player. 
it. Well hit, just got under it a little bit too much. Now batting number 31, Gabe Kaufman. Kaufman continued his on-base ways, reaching the first with a walk and a steal. Did have a couple of pop-outs. And there's a nice hit, but that's right at the shortstop. And a little high, but Kaufman is retired. Two first quick outs. First baseman lost his uh, sunglasses. Now batting number the ball. 28, Brandon Park. And this is the first time that we've seen Park today. Did play a little bit last time. And Park is two for five on the season with a couple of RBI, four walks, and a 400 batting average. So from the catcher position, that's some good numbers. The one thing that is interesting about the Knights is they do rotate several catchers. Cam Smiley caught the first game. We've got Park here. We saw Finky in the first game. Hafner also catches. So a lot of different options at the catcher position. And then with Hafner pitching, I mean, he was just lights out, Steve. You would have been extremely impressed with Hafner's effort uh, to close out game number one. And he caught most of that doubleheader last week. Yeah, I think Park came in for a few innings there at the end, but that is a good point. Yeah. I, and I hadn't had a chance to ask Coach Stern what his thought process was on that, but I promise you I will do that yeah. before our next broadcast. Unusual to see a catcher in both ends of the doubleheader. I mean, it is two seven-inning games. Yep. So, I mean, maybe he was thinking, hey, I'll get him through three, and that's like ten innings. Um, but Hafner's bat in a lineup is also a plus. Park just gets a hold of it. Fouling out of play. One ball, two strikes. And uh, Galarza has looked great. And there's right back up the box. And that will be the first base hit. For the Knights. And the first base runner for the Knights. We are going to pinch run for Park. As uh, if you are a catcher or pitcher, you can be pinch run from without having to be taken out of the game. That's one of the rules in the USCAA. And a lot of colleges now do that. Now number 50. Kevon Davis. And of course, Davis, if you have listened to any of our basketball broadcasts, you'll know that he called the men's games this year. Kevon has struggled to start the season. Three out of 18 with a 167 average. So we'll see what Kevon can do here. A little low. Fulton pitch running at first base. So uh, let's see if uh, the senior decides to take off and try to steal a base and get in scoring position here. We will keep an eye on Fulton. Inside, two balls, no strikes to Davis, which is good to see because when we saw Kevon last time, he was very aggressive. So it's nice to see that he's looking for his pitch. Fulton gets back to first. Did see a pickoff from Kozer in the first game, which was pretty impressive. Not a super long lead here. Does get the call on the outside corner with the off-speed pitch. Nothing like March baseball, that's for sure, on a beautiful 54-degree afternoon here at FNB Field. And Davis fouled back and out of play in any... Battled for the 2-0 and then quickly two strikes. So now Davis has to protect. And next week when we're here, Paul, it will be April baseball. And Davis smashes it to the gap. But it is caught. That seemed to hang up there for a long time. Yeah, I, I thought, thought that was in the gap easy. When he hit it, it looked like it had a chance to get down and, and uh, score the run. But... Just hang up there enough time for the outfielder to make the catch. Well, with that being said, uh, we're going to go to the bottom of the second. The Knights trail one to nothing as we go to inning number two, the bottom half, or excuse me, the top half of inning number three. The Knights baseball schedule has been released. Save the date for doubleheaders at FMB Field to kick off the season. 
The Knights host arch rival Bucks County Community College today, but next week on April 1st, the Knights will take on ESAC Division opponents Manor College. Both will be 1 p.m. starts. You can keep up with Knights baseball all season at www.centralpennknights.com. And we're not pulling your leg for April 1st next week. We really will be here. I will say that uh, you can keep up with all of the live stats of all the games as well by going to centralpennknights.com. We do do live stats, so you can keep up with the stats at centralpennknights.com. And, of course, we try to keep you abreast of the situation here in terms of stat lines and things of that nature but if you want to see the box score that's where it'll be and of course tomorrow morning on cpcnightlynews.com you can check out the game wrap we always do a game wrap of every home game including photos from our student photographers and the links to the live streams we're going to take just a short break and we'll be right back Sorry, that took a little longer. Um, Zell came up, looked like he either took a ball. Something happened, but he's staying in the game. So they just wanted to double check and make sure everything was okay. But alas, Zell seems all right. Okay. Irving steps in. This is the first time we're getting to see him on the day. Well, just the third game he's been in this year. Just one for three coming in. With a double. And it's going to be a tough play. But a good one nonetheless. We'll be scooping that in the glove and just tossing it to the first baseman with his with the, in the glove. And the Knights dug out as usual is quite boisterous. So the one three put out gets Irving. And we're back to the top of the order with Hill, and it's probably going to sound like a broken record because the next four batters struck out, and the next three struck out looking in the first. One ball, no strikes. A little low. Serbia's had good control so far, so... It's unusual to fall behind here, 2-0. Oh. Let's see if he can come back and get a good pitch here. A little low. Oh, he does get the call at the knees. One ball, one strike. So, Steve, if you want to share with us maybe some of the employers, if you happen to know off the top of your head, for the virtual job fair, that would be wonderful. Well, I didn't take a look lately, but I, I know some of the, the major employers in the, in the central Pennsylvania area in particular um, definitely have booze and attend this. So, you'll see uh, agencies from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, for instance. You'll see federal employers there, like NAVSUP. Uh, Naval Supply, which is right here in our backyard in Mechanicsburg, um, as well as a number of 
top private and independent companies as well. There's a shot to the gap. But what a catch there nice from Joseph. Catch. Yeah, interestingly enough, uh, my uh, daughter actually got a job at NavSub through an internship and was hired on. And uh, from what I understand, a lot of uh, people are sort of find themselves in that situation. They, they intern over there and end up getting positions. Alex, yeah, we've had a, a number of Central Penn graduates who have been hired uh, and several interns over there as well. But yeah, so like I said, you're going to want to, we'll, we'll uh, give the read again for more information. But again, if you have any questions about the virtual job fair, reach out to career services at centralpen.edu and um, making up my schedule for the podcast, we'll have you on next term to talk a bit more about that because that's going to run all the way through the end of our spring term. And he gets quickly two strikes. Yeah, when people hear junior achievement, you know, they might be thinking more of uh, K-12 to programming that junior achievement does, and they do, and they do a great job with it. But last year was the first year that they expanded this virtual job fair and opened it up to post-secondary schools like us as well. Close pitch just off the plate there for Zerby. He was looking for another strikeout looking. And you can also go in and explore employers and careers uh, by industry. So if you know that you want to work in healthcare or you want to work in banking, for instance, you know you can go in and you can explore the, the employers and the careers that way as well. I think any opportunity for our students to uh, look around, see what's out there, see who's hiring, I think all of that is very important. Uh, and it's something that we are going to be, I'm going to be promoting to my classes next term. And anyone out there listening, you should check it out yourself, especially if you're getting ready to look for that internship maybe over the summer. Be a good place to start. Well, Zerby had the first two strikes, but has given it back. And now the count is full to Fantaski, who struck out looking back in the first. Five strikeouts here for Zerby. And make, make it, it six. six. Fantasky strikes out swinging. And that's going to do it for the top of the third inning. The Knights are going to look here to get themselves on the board. Let's talk about one of my favorite events of the year. Mark your calendars for community night as we welcome all faculty, staff, alumni, and community members for the final home baseball game of the year against Kristen Dome. On Friday, April 26th, join us for a pregame recognition ceremony on Senior Day, followed by a doubleheader scheduled for a 4 p.m. first pitch. Catch the Knights under the lights for Community Night on April 26th. And I will be here, and Steve, I know you'll be here as well, and I'm going to have a cavalcade of co-hosts here with me that evening. We're going to bring back some alumni members. Of course, we'll have Steve on as well, so we're looking forward to that. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. Night. Now batting number seven, Brian Lowen. Lowen steps in. Uh, Lowen was one for one, reached base three times, had two steals, and an RBI in game one. So like I said, it was a team effort. Nice slider, is that gonna get down? Yes, it does. And the Knights. Have the leadoff runner. 
on base. And this one looks like it's going to be tight. So the Knights are going to have to grind it <laughs> grind it out. Lowen does have two now steals. Number 21, Ryan Lowen has really done a nice job here as a freshman stepping in with the injury to Nate Wise. And, uh, he's played well in, in the field and also got the back going and setting the table here. And the bunt from Morrell. And they will get Morrell at first. I was going to say, Morrell has had a pretty impressive season thus far. Steven, only five at bats. How's a home run and seven RBIs and three walks doing for you? Doing pretty well and, and getting the bunt down there. So we get the runner in scoring position with just one out here. So the sacrifice bunt, and that brings to the back to the now top of the order. Now number 11, Owen Zell get a base hit here. And off his foot. Zell has taken a couple of shots here thus far. And he is going to need a second. Hey, umpire going out to the mound there. Giving him a little bit of time to regroup. He might have had a bracelet or a chain there. Chain it looks like that might have come undone or tore. And Zell squares but wisely pulls it back. And I'll tell you even though Bucks County came in here a one and nine today man they are giving it their full effort. They know that you know in, in rivalry games you can kind of just throw the the stats out the window. Yeah because this is as big of a rivalry game as you can get for the Knights, and Zell fouls that straight back. And still a ball and two strikes. And with Zell's speed, if he can get that bunt down, he might have first and third with one out here quickly. And a big cut, and Zell is out. Second strikeout of the game, and I, I have to be honest with you, from the games that I remember calling with Owen Zell, I can't ever recall a time that he has struck out twice in one game. With that being said, Hoover up, who also struck out in the first. The slider outside. Now batting number 33, Adam See if Hoover can get a big two out hit here and tie this game. And off the end of the bat, does come up with it, does get the out at first, and that will retire the side. The Knights cannot push a run across, even though they did get the leadoff runner on base. And we go to the top of the fourth inning. It's one nothing, Bucks County. And this game is moving right along. Students, have you ever considered working on campus? Visit the Financial Aid Office to learn about study opportunities, work study opportunities for students. Positions are available across campus, the front desk, the learning center, athletics, and more. Students must have been enrolled for at least one full term and be in satisfactory academic standing. Contact the Financial Aid Office for more information. And while Zerby warms up, we'll take a short break and we'll be back here for the top of the fourth inning as an
Ooh. Now batting number Ooh. 10, Ooh. Evan Erglovich. Erglovich steps in. He struck out looking to end the first. Zerby with six strikeouts. And, you know, even though he did allow that double and the run to score, I mean, this is as sharp as I've seen Zerby really ever. Zerby's pitching well. Let's see if he can just hold them um, down here in the top of the inning and get those central pen bats going in the bottom of the inning. And that's popped way up. Park's got a play. This is going to be off our screen. They just reached the stands. A little dangerous back here. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. quickly two strikes. And that'll come straight back at us. Still two strikes. The 0 2. What a pitch and just high, I suppose. Derby checking the count to make sure he's got it right at 1 and 2. Big cut. And down goes Erglovich again for strikeout number seven for Colton Zerby. Nice pitch, came inside and, and kept that ball low. Screwed him into the ground. Now batting number 16, Cameron Visconto. Visconto struck out to start the second. It's going to be low. Bucks County leads 1-0 here. Thanks to a Condren RBI. And there is a pop up and low and underneath. Routine play for the shortstop. Two quick outs, this game moving right along. Only three hits total in the game. Zerby dealing out there today. Number 13, Joey Ruggiero. Ruggiero was the first non-strikeout for Bucks County as he popped to Zach Boyer. Lined out, get that screaming line drive. Right at Boyer. And takes a huge cut, comes up empty. One and two. Oh, I see that name, Joey Ruggiero, and I can't help but think of a Central Penn alum, Murray Ruggiero. I believe Baseball he's still player. coaching, isn't he? I mean, I, I know you keep up with a lot of our alumni as well, but last I saw, he was coaching in uh, at the college level. Yeah, I don't know if he still is or not, but uh, I know when he got his master's degree, he was definitely coaching then. Down in Virginia, I believe. And the pitch is going to be inside. Runs it down to three and one. And Zerby does not want to let this guy on base as Galarza hit a double. His first time up and then scored the only run. Big cut. Comes up empty. Does Ruggiero. Full count, two outs. Let's see if he can finish this inning off. There's a shot at Boyer. And that will retire the side. And it's another inning with 
No one across, but it's still a one nothing deficit as we go to the bottom of the fourth. And in the News Media Club at Central Penn College is looking for new members. Members have the opportunity to get hands-on experience writing for our student publication, The Nightly News, being a part of our nightly news podcast, and being a part of our sports live stream broadcast. Email me, uh, club advisor, Professor Paul Miller, at paulmiller at centralpen.edu. We're going to take a short break. And And Joseph steps in. Joseph Boyer Kaufman do up. Part of the order coming to the plate here in the bottom of the fourth. Let's see if we can get the bats going and get this tie or hopefully take the lead. And there is a pop out to left. And that is put away. Quickly one down in the bottom of the fourth, and the outs, unfortunately, are starting to mount up for the Knights as they trail one nothing here. And the good news, Paul, is that the Knights have twice as many hits as Bucks County. The bad news is that was only be two to one. Boyer flew out to center back in the second. And this is going to get through. And Boyer reaches first with the single. First baseman kind of pounding his glove there. I think uh, thinking maybe if he had dove, he might have been able to at least knock that ball. Now down. by number well 31, Gabe Kaufman. It almost looked like he thought the second baseman had a play on it and for him to get to first to cover the bag, but in all reality, I don't know if they really had much of a play on Boyer either way. Yeah, I don't think they would have, but he maybe gave up on it a little bit early. And Boyer had a couple of steals in the first game, and so they're keeping an eye on him over at first. Keep up with the Knights baseball at centralpennights.com. Click on schedules and click on baseball. And there goes Boyer. And he is gonna get in there with no problem. Got a good jump and that breaking pitch, not exactly the best pitch to, to throw on. And now it's 2-0 and on Kaufman. A good hitter's count here with that tying run at second. And that's outside. Quickly, 3-0. and Even a better hitter's count. I think with as good an eye as Kaufman has, I'd probably take here. And he does. Taking all the way, and that one right down the middle. So, 
He's set now. Kaufman, right at short. This is going to be a tough play at first. And he is safe. Pulled him off the bag. And so now we are cooking. Unfortunately, Boyer did not advance. So the force out is still in order for the double play. But now is the chance for Park. He's single now in the second. Number 28, Brayden Park. And Park. And a shortstop on that ground ball was able to at least keep it in front of him to keep Boyer from advancing. But we've got two on now with one out. The slider is outside. Paul Miller, Steve Hassinger here from FNB Field. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Knights trail 1-0 after winning the first game 7-4. And for the first time in this game, Paul, we're starting to see uh, Galarraza uh, struggle a little bit with the control. And there's a shot to center. And that ball's going to get down. And Boyer coming to the plate. And the run scores on the double from Brady Park. Good job there uh, by Brady Park of taking the extra base there when the throw went to third, going to second. So now you've got two more runs in scoring position with one out. Nice huge. piece of hitting, too, by Brady Park. Absolutely huge play there, Steve. Now batting number 50, Kiva Davis with only one out and runners at second and third is a base hit away from breaking this game open. A little high. And Coach Stern electing to pinch run again for part. <laughs> Kevon swung at a pitch that was letter high. Probably one he would want back. But it's only a 1-1 count. He got the inside corner call, and now it's one and two. Davis is in the hole. Good pitch there by Galarza. And Davis gets rung up, looking. Doesn't look like Davis was too happy about that call. They swung at that pitch that was high, and then now took two strikes. Number seven, Brian Lowen. Lowen singled back in the third, but was stranded. Big hitter here in the tie game with second and third, two out. The pitch. It's going to be straight back and quickly two strikes on Lowen. Not in the situation that he was hoping for. And give Galarza credit because he was struggling a little bit earlier in the inning with his control and then he gave up that tying hit. He's come back nicely here. And this is a flare. That's going to be out of play though. I'll tell you, if that ball would have gotten down, that was two runs guaranteed. Absolutely. Rell on deck if Lowen can reach. Big strikeout. And after getting himself into some trouble, strikes out back-to-back -back hitters, does Galarza. And we are going to go to the top of the fifth as the Knights tie it up 1-1. It's hard to study when you're hungry. The college pantry can help. Central Penn College and your Student Government Association are committed to ensuring that all of our CPC Knights have access to food when they need it. Requests are kept anonymous and can be submitted online. Look for the link under the link section of Student Central or contact Lindsay Garber, Director of Housing and Residence Life at lindsaygarber at centralpenn.edu. And I wanted to give a shout out to our Gamma Beta Phi Club. Uh, they, I think they collected over 400 items 
as part of their Super Bowl uh, food drive, which uh, very impressive. And if you've been in the pantry lately, it is it is stocked and ready to go for our spring term. So congratulations. Uh, very much go out to Gamma Beta Phi. All right, we're going to take a short break. We will be right back at the end of the fifth, but we are going to say goodbye to Mr. Steve Hassinger. Steve, thank you so much for joining us, and we will have you back next Monday. I've enjoyed it, and I'll be back for the both games of the doubleheader next week. Fantastic, and thank you, Steve, for taking time out of your day to join us down here at FNB Field. Uh, but So Steve's going to sign off, and we're going to take a short break. my friend it's going to be out of play for Galarza the 0-1 here in the top of the fifth straight back quickly two strikes Go to popped him out of play. Knights are able to battle back and tie this game up at one here in the top of the fifth. Stairs, one and two. There's a shot right up the middle, and that will be a single for Galarza. Two for two on the day with a run score. Condren steps in, singled back in the second. Big hack, comes up empty. Zerbi has really been impressive today. Eight Ks. For Zerbe. Another big swing. <coughs> Condren comes up empty on that one as well. And there is a shot to center. And an out. Struck out back in the second. Upstairs for Zerby. One ball, no strikes. 
It's going to be low. Two and oh. Salino lays off that one. Three and oh. And Zerbi is going to have to battle back. The pitch gets that call at the knees. Attention baseball fans, the concession stand will be closing in five minutes. Last call for the concession stand. Three balls, one strike, one down here, top five, one, one. And it shows bunt. Foul, so it goes to three and two, runs it full from the 3-0. Zerbi battles back to get two strikes. Pleasure to be here with you. We were joined there by Career Services Director and my color commentary. Uh, one of my color commentators, Steve Assinger, stopped by to talk about the JA Inspire job fair. Behind us. So Solano. Hangs in there. Not really much going on over at first. Galarza. They're gonna bring him up on the check swing. And that certainly was a big play there after starting him off three and O. Oh, Zerbi battles back for the strikeout. Now batting number 11, Christian Irving. Irving steps in, grounded to the pitcher. Back in the third to lead him off. First pitch swinging, and Park's got a play, and he can't come up with it. upset with himself, but that's a tough play into the sun. I mean, he was looking directly into the sun, so tough play there. Hopefully it doesn't come back to haunt the Knights. This 1-1 one, one tie in the top of the fifth. And a big cut comes up empty. Does Irving. Pleasure to be here with you. Of course, we'll be back here next Monday. If you're off for the holiday, come on out and join us for free baseball. Fouled it straight back. No balls, two strikes. Can Zerby get out of the slight jam? Low. Irving hanging tight. Next Monday, we'll be here against Manor College for a 1 o'clock doubleheader. Be here all afternoon. So if you're off, like I said, come out for free. Bring the kids if they're off. And there's a shot to right, but right at... Kaufman, who comes up and retires the side. And another zero put up for Colton Zerby, who's only allowed two hits to this point. And it's a 1-1 tie as we head to the bottom of the fifth. Staying active just got easier. For those striving to be more active, our athletic department has recently launched Sir Will's Rec Rentals. 
A new initiative that enables students to borrow sports equipment, sign out basketball, volleyball, and more to use in our outdoor rec areas. Stop by the underground to borrow equipment for up to seven days and get your game on. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be back here with you. Bottom of the fifth, Knights tied up with... Morell steps in. Sack Bunt back in the third for Morell. And Morell over to first. And good play there by Bucks County. Zell comes up. He has struck out twice here in this contest. Now batting number 11, Owen Zell. And here would be a good time for him to get on base. First pitch swinging. Zell, one of the key players on this team. If the Knights are... Prepared to go to the Small College World Series. It's going to be Zell who's going to have to lead the way. Outside. Runs the count to two and one. Sorry, one and one there. 58 degrees here for the second game. Inside, that runs the count to two and one. And Zell out of play. Bottom five, Knights and Bucks County tied at one. And he rung up Zell, and that's three strikeouts for Owen Zell. Now batting number 33, Adam Hoover. Well, pretty much no matter what, the Knights will get the heart of the order back up, whether Hoover can get on base here or whether it's, you know, they start the next inning off. So on the bright side, the Knights will have those batters due up in the next inning. And of course, being the home team, you get to bat last if the game is still tied. Big hack there from Hover, comes up empty. FNB Field, home of the Harrisburg Senators, the AA affiliate of the Washington Nationals. I mentioned this in the first game, but two of the game's brightest stars uh, got some time in with Harrisburg last year. Remains to be seen if, if they're going to be reassigned here this season. And Hoover stays alive, but fouls it off. Galarza's looked quite fantastic in his own right. And he blows Hoover away. And that will retire the side. The Knights, no runs, no hits, no errors. 
We're going to go to the top of the six with this game tied at one. I'm going to take a short break. We will be right Hill steps in 0 for 2 on the day. Struck out on the first. Flew out to center in the third. Harvey McLean now in. Zerby pitched five tremendous innings with eight strikeouts, but is not going to be in line for the victory today. Does not appear McLean has pitched this season. Uh, but I do remember him pitching last season, and he has got quite an electric arm. It's one thing that we can say about the Knights over the last couple of seasons. They certainly have not had any shortage of pitching. It was sort of the knock of the, the 2020 team that that went seven and one, of course, uh, you know, some some additional pitching might have helped, but something Coach Stern has really worked on over the last couple of years. And a lot of, considering McLean hasn't pitched this year, a, a vote of confidence from Coach Stern. Inside, 2-2. Scoring game here, 1-1. One, one. A pitcher's duel. And a slider outside for McLean. So after starting off with two strikes, three balls. And the pitch. He struck him out. Big strike out there from Harvey McLean. 
brings up Fantaski, who has struck out twice now, here in game two. two. Alex Fantaski. Pleasure to be here with you, Paul Miller from the Nightly News. We will be back here with you next Monday. And Fantaski fouled it off his foot and he goes down. Does seem okay though. Probably one of the most painful things that you can do in the sport, short of, you know, take, taking a 90 mile an hour heater. But Fantaski. Seems okay. What a pitch there. Quickly two strikes. And McLean so far so good. Just after five o'clock here at the island. 59, now we're seeing 60 degrees on the big board. Of course, that is in direct sunlight, so I don't know what impact that has, but it's definitely a beautiful day. And Fantaski. All the way to the wall. And he might be going for three. And he is. Stand up triple for Fantaski. Not sure if I agree with Kaufman diving to try to stop that ball from going to the ball, to the wall. Uh, but alas, with one out, anything to the outfield could score a run. And that one run is everything right now as this game is tied. Nice pitch by McLean, catching the outside corner with a fastball. It's like the infield in here to try to make sure that that run doesn't cross the plate with an infield hit. Erdlovich way out of play. One, one. And this is why you bring the infield in. Beautiful play at first, and it looked like Hoover came up a little lame there as he got hit by Erglovich. Two down, that was a huge out there. Now the sack fly off the table. Four Bucks County. <laughs> nice slider there from McLean. First time he's thrown that. And now normal depth from the infield for the Knights. Being cut there, two strikes for McLean. And if McLean can pitch around this triple, that would be huge for Central Penn. Nice crowd here on this beautiful afternoon. And he hit him. McLean one pitch away from getting out of this inning. And he hits Ergla, excuse me, uh, Visconto. Rogerio, 0 for 2. Outside, 
on the slider. Top six. Remember, we played two seven-inning games today. And there is active pitching in the Knights' bullpen. And he gets back into first base safely. The pitch. Two balls, no strikes, first and third. McLean's got to get out of this inning. Outside, runs the count to three and oh. There goes the runner, and they give him second. And as for the batter, McLean just needs to get him. Does have a base open, though. But I don't know that you want Galarraza coming up because he is two for two on the day. And this is going to be tough, and it gets through the hole. And an RBI for Rogerio. And Tasky scores. Viscanto to third. And that gives Bucks County a two to one lead. Bucks County two, Knights one. Two down here in the top of the sixth. Knights still have two times up to the plate. McLean's got to get out of this jam. Big swing there from Galarza. No balls, two strikes. Can McLean get out of this? Strikes him out, but not before. The damage is done as Bucks County sends the second run across the plate. And we're going to go to the bottom of the sixth. Knights trail 2-1. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be back here with you in just a few minutes. Galarza still on the mound, only allowed one run on five hits for the Knights. But as now I mentioned, now batting number 13, Nick Joseph. 
As I mentioned, we've got the three, four, five hitters, Joseph Boyer Kaufman coming up here. So the Knights need to get something going. Down just one run here in the bottom of the sixth. Big cut from Joseph. Inside, two balls, one strike to Joseph, who is 0 for 2 on the day. He struck out in the first, flew out to left, back in the fourth. And he hit him. And I'll tell you what, definitely a painful way to get on first, but nonetheless, we needed a runner, a leadoff runner, that is. And now course, number Zach Boyer. 14, Zach Boyer. Check in with Coach Stern on the plan here. I mean, I've seen Boyer bump before. Uh, he is one of the best offensive threats for the Knights, but Coach Stern is all about moving runners over, especially in a situation like this. So we may see Boyer bunting here. Want to see what Joseph's going to do on first. And he stays tight. Boyer does not show bunt. And that ball is inside. Again, I, from my vantage point here behind home plate, I cannot see if Bucks County has anybody warming. I would imagine they would this late in the game. There he goes. And there is a shot. And that is going to get down. And a double from Zach Boyer ties up this game. And that is what the doctor ordered here in the bottom of the sixth. Number 31, Gabe Kaufman. And Kaufman now steps in, still no one out, and a chance to break this game open. Gets that strike called. Zach Boyer, what a play. That double to the wall. And Kaufman out of play. Kaufman one for two on the day. The single back in the fourth. Big slide piece. Gets away, does come up with that out, but Boyer moves to third. And Park, who drove in the first RBI of the day. Number 28, Brandon Park. Another base hit from Park. Could be. Regain a lead for the Knights. Big hack. Good eye for Park. Two, two, three balls, one strike. Looking to give that one a ride. He's gonna walk him. Yeah. 
Joseph was hit by the pitch. Now batting. And scored in this inning. Boyer with the double. Kaufman struck out. Park walked. We got first and third. Only one out for Davis. the bunt he pulled it back and Park with the steal and now we have two runners in scoring position did get the strike call on that first pitch but we'll take the base and that's outside Galarza it's got to be getting up there at this pitch count it's been relatively efficient Low, two and one. And Bucks County also has their infield in, so a lot of room for Davis to try to find a sweet spot in the defense. And Kevon, after the first pitch strike, has got three balls in a row. Three and one. And he walks him. Davis will walk to load the bases. And what a spot for the freshman. Tanner McCoy. And McCoy to this point in the season, three of 11 with four RBI and a double. And I'll tell you, double now, here, we'll break this game wide right open. Number 43, Tanner McCoy. A 2-2 score. <laughs> Fouls off the first pitch. Outside. And that is to center field. And that's going to get a run in. Three to two. Big sack fly from McCoy. And the Knights creep ahead to a 3-2 lead. Now batting number 21, Rondell Morrell. And Morrell steps in. And he's a shot to left, but right, excuse me, a shot to right, but right at the right fielder. Got some good uh, aluminum on that ball, but unfortunately right at the right fielder. But that's not before the Knights jump out to a three to two lead with two runs there in the bottom of the sixth, which brings about out Harvey McLean to close it out. We're gonna take a short break and we'll be back here with you. For
Here we go. We're on the top of the seventh. So Condren up to the plate, bottom of the order here for Bucks County. And McLean stays in the game. What a set of games here today, back and forth. You can tell these two teams have a rivalry and no matter what happened previous coming into today, these games have been as advertised. The Knights picked up a seven for victory in the first game of the doubleheader. Jeff Randy Montero, Nightly News player of the game. Here, the Knights squeak ahead to a 3-2 lead, thanks in part to the Zach Boyer double off the wall. But another team effort here for the Knights. And two strikes. Condren, Solino, Irving do up in the top of the seventh inning. And can the Knights close this victory out with McLean on the mound? Inside runs the count full. The 3 2. Out of play. Three balls, two strikes. Try it again. Big swing and a miss. McLean with his third strikeout. So McLean allowed that run. The Knights answered. This has been a theme today. Salino struck out twice today. Ken McLean. He gets the call at the letters. And Bucks County's coach did not appreciate that strike call. But alas, two quick strikes from McLean. the pitch and he struck him out strikeout number four for Harvey McLean who is looking to pick up the victory here because when Zerby left after five it was 1-1 one, one. so he is not he's going to get the no decision today McLean could pick up the victory and we are one out away big swing and a miss for Irving Looks like they were actually pinch hitting here. This is number seven, Jose Carrero. This is the final hope for Bucks County. Low and away for McLean. One ball, one strike, two down. It is three, two Knights lead in the bottom of the, excuse me, the top of the seventh inning. This will be it. One more out for the Knights. And he's got the heat. And that's out of play. One ball, two strikes. And Bucks County down to their final strike. What a day here for Knights baseball. A win here would put them to eight and four on the season and run their winning streak to seven games. The pitch. It's gonna be right back up the middle. This is gonna be a tricky play. And a single there for Carrero. And a nail biter here. Looks like there's going to be a pinch runner now. That's Luke Redding, who pitched in the first contest. <coughs>
three ball, excuse me, three, two. Knights are clinging on to a one run lead. As we get to the final out here, uh, special thanks to Steve Hansinger, who joined us here in the booth. He'll be back next Monday for color commentary with us. Special thanks to Abby Bresky, our sideline reporter and photographer here for the games. Does a wonderful job doing the post-game interviews. Knights need just one more out. Upstairs, one ball, one strike. Three, two. Can McLean get out of this? And that's going to be out of play, so one ball, two strikes. And again, Bucks County down to their final strike. Can McLean do it? And another tough play. Boyer's going to come up with it. And it gets away. And a good thing he had a backup there. And this game continues. Now with two runners. And McLean just needs one more out. Has two runners on base. Now batting number two, Alex Fantastic. Just off the plate. Can McLean get this final out? Downstairs. The 2-0. 3-0. Looks like this is McLean's game. No one up in the pen at this point. But he's about to walk the bases loaded if he can't throw a strike here. And does get that strike. Does have a base open. Fantasky hit that triple back in the sixth. And that is deep. But it's going to be caught. Oh, my gosh. Kaufman came up with it. What a play. And that was as close of a game as you're going to see. Nightly News player of the game is going to be Colton Zerby. Five innings pitched with two hits, only allowed one run and eight strikeouts. So congratulations to Colton Zerby for winning the Nightly News Player of the Game, and congratulations to the Knights to run that number five uh, win streak to two more, seven consecutive games. The Knights go to eight and four. Gosh, what a conclusion to that game as McLean... <laughs> battled through trouble and ended up picking up the victory in this game again as the Knights are victorious. Well, we are going to get ready to go down to uh, Nightly News sideline reporter, Abby Bereski. She's going to have uh, Colton Zerby, the player of the game, here in just a moment.
In the meantime, keep in mind that we will be here next Monday for a double dip against Manor College, one of our ESAC rivals. That'll be a one o'clock game. Uh, myself and Steve Hassinger will be here with you. And hopefully it's as beautiful of a day as it is today out there. So you can come join us if you happen to have off from work. And if the kids have off, bring them on out. And nice to see the celebration there for the Knights. Again, the Knights victorious in both games of a doubleheader 7-4 and 3-2. And even sending Bucks County Community College to 1-11 while the Knights are 8-4 on the young season. Um, they will have a couple of games in the meantime, so keep up with centralpennights.com for the box scores for those games and updates. And like I said, we will be back here next Monday for the doubleheader against Manor College. Just waiting for the post-game meeting here, see if we can get down to Abby Bresky with Colton Zerby. We're gonna head down there now. All right, here with Colton Zerby. Had a fantastic first half. What do you say to that? I mean, it's just uh, team wins. That's really the name of the game here. I mean, fielding was good, strung hits together, pitching was good. So all in all, I mean, we played pretty sound baseball. How do you, how do you create that energy for the team as a pitcher? Just, you know, trying to just strikes, you know, keeping our fielders on edge, stuff like that, you know, just so they don't get bored out there, you know, they can keep the momentum going and then just kind of bringing that energy into the dugout whenever you get out. Congrats on two more wins. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Thank you so much, Abby, for uh, those awesome words with Colton. Again, Knights have been victorious today by a score of 3-2. to two. They won the first game 7-4, so the Knights victorious in both games of the doubleheader. We'll be back with you next Monday for the doubleheader against Manor College. But for now, special thanks to Steve Hassinger and Abby Bresky. But this is Paul Miller for the Nightly News Media Club. We'll see you again next Monday.